さあパールジャム特集ということでお送りしているこの m t v ロックスいよいよここからエディ・ベイダーの貴重なコメント映像を見ていただくんですけれども、まあ、ここでねエディはいろいろ、まあ、あの音楽的なバックグラウンドからバンドの結成いろんなことを語ってくれてますんで早速それをご覧いただきたいと思いますどうぞ I see okay so how did you get into rock first place? I didn't it, it got me it, I think it, it, it swallowed me up somehow、mm. it um It was always a, it's a powerful art form. You know, it's, it's, it is an art form. There's no argument about that. I don't, you know, I don't want to sound pompous, you know, when you say, well, rock and roll, it's an art form. But it is. You know, it's music, and it's, and it's an, an extreme art. It's, it's a tremendous art form where、um, it hits you on different levels. You know,、um, it, it's, it's obviously this.、Um, You know, it's, it's something where the, the, the audio hits you hardcore.、Um, you, your,、uh, your senses are working with、um, the words that are coming through. You know, you're listening to that, and when you see it live, you've got a visual. So it's a very, you know, it's a very powerful medium. And, and、uh, it was probably the one that hit me hardest when I was a little kid. Still does, you know. Still does. There's new bands that come out that just, you know, make me.、Uh, Happy. I'm not happy that much, but that's what makes me happy is music. I was thinking about happiness. What is happiness? And I was thinking that it was just the absence of pain. So, how did you join the Power Jam in the first place? Well, that was it. They got that tape.、Mm -hmm. um, and then、uh, I disappeared for a week. I was always very hard to get a hold of. You know, I worked、mm -hmm. a, a midnight shift, and then I would work in the day、um, for a club、mm -hmm. for free, lifting equipment and stuff. Um, maybe I would get a t shirt from the band or something, or, but it was always for free.、Um, but in order to get closer to music, you know,、mm -hmm. this way you could get in to the, see the bands free and、um, maybe talk to them at sound check or shake their hand, you know, or、mm -hmm. you know, Joe Strummer from The Clash.、Oh, yeah. yeah, I got to like, no one was looking, so I picked up his guitar and played London Calling, you know, and I put it back and <laughs> ran back in the corner and just, yeah, I just played. Strumming his guitar. I'd get a Stuart Copeland drumstick or something like that, you know. But、um, I was always hard to get a hold of, and, and my friend Jack Irons, who、um, plays with the band Eleven and used to be in the Peppers and stuff, we,、um, he called me up and, and said, Yeah, those guys that I'd given you that tape, because he's the one who gave me the tape, he said, Those guys are looking for you. And I went up and spent a week in Seattle. and We wrote like ten songs in five days, and then the sixth day we played a show, and then the seventh day we recorded it all.、Mm -hmm. Just like that. And then I went back to San Diego, it was all like a big dream.、Mm -hmm. But、um, if I needed a pinch, all I had to do was put that tape in. I could hear, wow, cool. So before you joined p a l j a m what kind of music did you play? Just, I've always just played real music, you know, stuff that felt good.、Um, nothing ever felt as good as this, I must say. And, and that's why、um, the opportunity to, to, to move to Seattle and, and change my life、um, was taken up so quickly without much thought because what Stone and Jeff were writing and Mike,、um, it, it really hit me. And it started bringing out things that, that no other music had. had、uh, Had pulled out of me before. You know, their music was like a blank canvas or, or a canvas that like, allowed me to do you know, what I felt and it worked. I, mean, I wrote that song alive when I was surfing one day after I had listened to their tape all night at work. I worked a midnight shift. So, you know, th that was a story. That's not a, not, when I think back, you know, it's a pretty unusual song to just send up to some strangers, you know. But I never really, you know, I've never been the type to really care about that kind of thing. And, and their music, it, it sounded real to me, and the words were real to me, and put it together and just, you know, sent it off. So, and now it's funny that people sing along to that song, you know, which easily, I could have easily not sent that off, you know. No, it could have been very easy for no one to ever hear that song. The debut album 10 has sold a large amount of、uh, records now, and how do you analyze this success? 
there's there's a um, there's a record company called Sony mm -hmm. that put the record out. I think it's their job to analyze it. It's my job just to play. You know? Right. I don't so, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I I can't even guess. I, I would have never guessed, and and I would have never bet, and and. And if I would have bet, I probably wouldn't want to win the bet. I don't think I want this, you know. Mm -hmm. It can be a scary thing to sell that many records because then people start being cynical with you. Now you're some kind of big thing mm -hmm. and they don't open up to you in the same way, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a, I think our band is a, it's a small foreign film. It's not a blockbuster American movie. It's not Terminator 2, you know. Never wanted to be. So I don't want people thinking we are, or talking about us like we are, saying, you gotta listen to this record, it's the greatest thing, you gotta listen to this record. Because it's, it's something, it's, it's much more subtle, you have to kind of open yourself up to it and maybe listen to it on headphones and then like start hearing what's really happening and hearing some of the emotions on there and stuff. Anytime you get cynical with art or emotion, in a way you, you start censoring it, you know. You start not believing it. Or okay, so are you satisfied with 10 as an album? Is there anything you feel that you shouldn't do that or you could do this? Well, I, I have to be satisfied because there's no way to change it now. <laughs> and um, we just go out and play these songs live. And um, I think, I think uh, that's the best place to hear the music is live. It's much louder. You can jump around like crazy and your parents aren't going to tell you to turn it down. And uh, uh, you can kind of lose yourself even with headphones laying in bed. You can lose yourself within it. Or, uh, uh, live. Live would be the place to see it. But, but then when you come home, if you want to get that feeling again, I think you can listen to the songs in the record and they'll be close enough. Um, it's a little bit faster live, so if you own the record, if you own it on disc, you might want to just Use your finger, make it go a little bit faster. Yeah. Uh, can you give to uh, Japanese fans to, to the message to a Japanese fans? I'd love to. Oh, do I have one? Yeah. And just say it right here. Yeah. I need to think about it. <coughs> Japanese fans are important. Any. Okay. Think about this for a second. Gosh. There's too much to say. How much tape do we have? No. Um, all right, hey, this is Eddie from Pearl Jam. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I mean that. Um, why? Be because I never thought people in Japan would ever be listening to my songs. Never. So I think it's really cool, and I thank you for that. And um, uh, I hope it gives you strength uh, knowing that just a little guy like me was able to do something and maybe make a record and get it over to your country. Um, if you're out there, uh, maybe you too can make a record and maybe I'll be listening to it someday. And um, believe in yourself. Be strong, okay?